We welcome you into week 10 of the Mike Turner Show as Carson Newman goes on the road and collects its first win at Lenore Rhine since 2009. Eagles victorious, 42 to 28. Hello everyone, I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman head football coach, Mike Turner. Mike, what a second half performance uh, and what a way for this senior class to grab its first victory over LR while keeping your Eagles in the hunt for the playoffs. What was it about that second half that allowed you to seal the victory? Well, number one, we took care of the football. Uh, we, did, we didn't give them anything at all in the second half. Um, I, I think our kids uh, you know, saw that we had a chance there to score right before halftime and we didn't. And it uh, goes back to the, got your back against the wall and you got to come out fighting. Uh, but I, I think they had a great look in their eye at halftime, had great determination. But simply, we just executed and did what we're supposed to do in the second half. You, we've used the phrase backs against the wall several times over the past few weeks. Why has this team been so successful playing with that mentality while others would crumble? Well, I, th I think you got to have a dream. We talked to our kids about having a dream, about a dream of becoming a great football team, a great program. Uh, uh, something else left after the regular season's over with. All those things, you gotta have a dream, and, and the dream gives you some passion. Uh, and, and there's football players, and there's football players that play with passion. And I hope uh, we can get this football team and uh, this program to that every Saturday. It's, it's a great opportunity to play. It's a great opportunity to play with passion. Uh, it's a great opportunity to honor the, the God that created you and put you here on this earth for a reason. Uh, you, you talk about that again, another week with adverse conditions, uh, uh, mm. rainy, windy, cold in the first half, uh, and yet your team m was bouncing up and down, clear from the stands that uh, they were fired up to uh, give 100% on the field. How does that make you feel as a, a head oh, coach? It, it makes you feel very comfortable when you watch the warm up and see how they went about that. Uh, uh, they were very calm in the warm up, uh, very efficient. Uh, and I was proud of the way they rallied there, right, as we got ready to go in. Uh, anytime you're on the road and you're in uh, not so uh, surrounding areas that you guard, you've got to go different distances to get on the field, off the field, back on, back off. Um, they handled that well and, and came out and, and started the game off just like you wanted to start it off. Uh, got it going. Our defense was, was just just shutting people down, and we, had a, we took the first series and scored. Uh, and then we laid it on the ground the next two series. The defense responded to that and shut them right back down. So we gave up a uh, punt return that we shouldn't have given up. We missed, I think, six tackles in that. Um, it wasn't the greatest kick, uh, but that's irrelevant when it comes down to missing six tackles. We need, we need to shut that down then. Carson Newman gets the win over the Lenore <clears throat> Line Bears 42-28. to We'll break down the first half when we come back after these messages on the Mike Turner Show. Back on the Mike Turner Show as Carson Newman collects a 42-28 win over the Lenore Rhyme Bears on the road. Eagles move to 7-3 after Week 10. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside the Eagles head coach Mike Turner. Mike, a first half, uh, you alluded to it earlier, but a uh, massive play on your first drive. Face third and five, I think it was, and Derek Evans, longest rush of the season for any Carson Newman player, 76 yards on an option keeper to the house. What happened on that play to o open things up and put your Eagles out on the front foot early? Well, we had good movement at the line of scrimmage. Uh, that allowed the back to hit the lane that uh, we wanted to give for Derek to read. Uh, and the movement at the line of scrimmage, man, I, I do enjoy seeing that happen. <laughs> uh, and I do joy, enjoy seeing backs hit the, hit the lane uh, 100 miles an hour like they're supposed to. Uh, and, and Derek had a, did a, a, a great job reading it. He pulls it. The guy the, overruns it, his, keep, uh, his key overruns it on the outside of the pitch, and he turns it up, and there's nobody got him. He just takes off and goes. Uh, what a performance for him. Uh, five rushing touchdowns, uh, four of those in the second half, and we'll get to that uh, a little bit later on, but ties the single game scoring record, four rushing touchdowns, and in some pretty elite company, Buck Wakefield and Kenneth Tyson, two of the all-time greats here uh, at Carson Newman. What's that like for him in his sophomore year to uh, hit that milestone, hit that bench park, and go over 100 yards rushing on the day as well? Well, I think that's great for him, and I hope he's the guy that breaks a record one day. Uh, soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd, I'd like to see him break that record. Uh, Derek d did a good job for us, uh, Saturday operating the option. Uh, we did lay it on the ground a couple times when uh, there's one thing about this option. Uh, you know, it's, it's, there's not any riding to the side in this one. If you, if you <laughs> put that out there, baby, it's out there. And uh, 
we, we, had, a, we had a couple of mix-ups on it there uh, in, in two situations there in the first half and laid the ball on the ground. And, you know, thank goodness for our defense backing us up. And, and I really love the way these kids, and they say it themselves, uh, and they mean it. I, I, I think it's genuine that they got each other's back. Uh, one's not getting it done in one area, one's backing him up. The other one's vice versa doing it that way. So really, really proud of them and how they responded. No panic, no finger pointing, hey, let's go get our job done. We'll, we'll, we'll get it all squared away. It felt like the defense almost wanted to be on the field with the way they were yeah, performing. Absolutely. Uh, one of the fumbles that LR recovers gives them first and goal from uh, their eight and you hold them to a field goal. Right. We'll, on, and three straight negative plays out of your defense right. as well. What enabled them to get such a good push throughout the contest? Well, I, I think they were well prepared. Uh, I think they uh, recognized uh, the Coach Slade and his staff. They were they were mixing up calls in there, but we were playing a good base uh, area in defense, and, and those kids just attacked them. It's it's a it's it's all a mindset. Uh, you know, the, those kids got after them. They got confidence. They believe in each other. Uh, and it's great to see a defense, like you said, want to go on the field. You know what I mean? That, that's a great thing. It's not one of those have to. It's a want to get out there. Hey, because they came running on the field, say, hey, we'll get it back for you. And they did. They turned right around and got it back. Yeah, you're down at the, the break for the first time all, all season. Uh, arguably a first half that you dominated, but uh, really three or four plays that put LR in the front foot. H how'd you maintain control and calm uh, in spite of – a punt return for a touchdown mm -hmm. by Kyle Duggar and an 86-yard run from Nelson Brown for a score. Right. You know, that was really the uh, – that one snap was the only blemish on defense. They did a great job. All the other things, per yardage and all those kind of things. But it only takes one snap in a game one way or the other to make a difference. We've already seen that this year as far as the football team goes. Uh, we had some things happen to us there in the first half that, you know, we, we, we need to be able to handle better, obviously. Uh, we had an opportunity there right before the half. Uh, some things go our way uh, <laughs> that we would have had an opportunity to score again there right before the half and change the score back to us being in the lead. Uh, and our kids were fired up at halftime and had our coaches did a great job of looking them in the eyeball and talking about calming down, those kind of things. Uh, we got together and, and I really think what happens, and you know, we said this all year, what happens early in the third mm -hmm. quarter, right? And, uh, I think we, we got the football, took it down and scored. Uh, and then they gave up. Then they got a chance to score. But, hey, the offense responded to the defense at that time and took it right back and scored and put us back up on top. So our kids are handling this game well. They're handling situations well. Uh, they're doing it together. Uh, they're pulling for each other. They're encouraging each other. And, and if you had a what would you like to have happen to this football team, you asked me that in August, and this is exactly where I'd like them to be. And what kind of uh, mindset they are, what kind of uh, player are they, not individuals, but team mm -hmm. players, that's exactly what you want to have right here in November. And believing. And believing, baby, because that's right. <laughs> hey, that's, that's first. That's first. Carson Newman down at the halftime break, 20-14 to 14, against the LR Bears, and we take a look at those first half highlights. Possession for the first time in five weeks. Evans takes. We'll keep it. Evans burst free along the right sideline. Derek Evans in a foot race across midfield. Tight roping inside the 30. Derek Evans takes it the distance. Touchdown, Carson Newman. 76 yards for Derek Evans on the third play from scrimmage. And the Eagles have a 6 0 lead, a minute three into the ball game. Oh, boy! For Lenore Ryan, this is the formation that worked so well for LR last year against the Eagles. Pistol look for Keller. Two sidecars with Brown the single setback. Wide out each direction, no tight ends. Stretch play to the left side for Huff. Huff hitting the backfield and dropped for a loss by Jordan Price, stringing him out to the left sideline. Loss of one back to the 26 at second and 11. First and 10 Bears left hash at the Eagle 46, trailing 7 to 3. Keller gives to Huff. Huff caught in the backfield. Ross Pryor won't let him free. Drops him for a loss of three in the boundary left. Back at the 49-yard line. Second and 13. Good effort by Pryor to get into the backfield. Eagles defense will be called upon here in the goal line situation. First and goal from the six. Right hash for the Bears moving left to right. Keller takes the snap. Hands off Brown. Stretch play to the right. He's overwhelmed in the backfield and sandwiched by Jason Cook-Calhoun and Antonio Henderson. 
Loses three yards back to the nine. Keller under center with Brown behind him. First and 10 LR. Left hash. Keller lost the football on the snap. The Eagles right there with it. Jarvis Green was into the fray. And Carson Newman takes advantage of an LR miscue. Eagles under center for third and 11. Right hash at the Eagles' own 46. Two and one, Evan Stinks. Rolling the pocket left, looking to throw. Does throw, dumps it. Complete to Miller at the 40. Miller angles right across the 30. Bobbles the football as he heads to the turf and secures it for the first down over the boundary left side down at the 25-yard line. 29 yards and a first down through the air to Dorian Miller. Man in motion, McCarrick to the right side of the line for the Eagles. Fours to get a playoff. Evans takes, trap to the right side, Dillingham. That opens up lovely. Dillingham across the 15 and 10, angling over the numbers to the five and to the house. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Eagles dial up the trap to Jared Dillingham and it strikes Pater. 25 yards for the score and the Eagles lead 13 to six. 14.53 left in the first half. Wide receiver in motion from left to right. They'll hand it off to him and Jones Whipped in the backfield by Darius Williams. Williams perfectly read the end around and drops him for a loss of six back to the 15. Hello, Darius Williams. Those are the first half highlights. Eagles found themselves down at the break 21 to 14 to the Lenore Ryan Bears. First time that Carson Newman had trailed at the half all season, but the Eagles do go on to win 42 to 28. Mike, a, a halftime locker room. Again, first time you're down at the break all season. What's said this week compared to previous weeks? Not, not anything very much different. I mean, they just believe in what you're doing, keep believing in each other. Uh, gosh, they, they, they felt like they were in control, and I, and I felt like we were mm -hmm. in control of the ball game. I, I didn't think there was anything that was getting away from us that had got away from us. Uh, I thought on both lines of scrimmage, we were controlling that one for the most part, and uh, we just needed to make sure we weren't going to go out there and be an enemy to ourselves. <laughs> we, we didn't need that to happen. <laughs> We needed all the friends we could get at that time. Rushed the ball effectively, but also threw the ball effectively in, in spite of uh, yes. the, the wet weather. Uh, Derek Evans goes for nearly 150 yards and only misses on three throws. Dorian Miller, uh, as has been the entire season, his top target, matches a modern era record with eight receptions in that game. Why were you so effective getting the, the football through the air, especially to him? Well, we, we sort of held off in the first half. We probably, in the first series, had a touchdown pass open if we could just get him the ball. Okay, well, I mean, wide open mm -hmm. for a touchdown in the first series. Uh, what we, we needed to take care of the football, and I felt like as long as we took care of the football and our defense was in control like they were, uh, you know, while it was pouring down rain, we weren't going to put him in a bad way. Uh, and then I talked to him about, gosh, we, we, were, we were taking the play action throw and getting it to him and let him be a playmaker. And uh, you get Dorian Miller the ball in the middle of the field, or not in the middle of the field, but you get him open and get him a football with a little headway, he's pretty dangerous. Carson Newman gets the win over the Lenore Ryan Bears, 42 to 28. We'll took a, take a look at a dominant second half effort for the Eagles when we get back after these messages on the Mike Turner Show. Eagles go on the road and win in Hickory, North Carolina for the first time since 2009. Carson Newman beats Lenore Ryan at 42 28. Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. Mike, a, a second half where you find yourselves trailing in the fourth quarter, but you have your first touchdown or greater fourth quarter comeback since the last time you won in Hickory uh, in 2009 when the Eagles were down uh, 10 that year to, to Lenore Ryan. How did you maintain calm composure and uh, get the job done with 21 unanswered in the fourth quarter? Well, I think our kids knew we could uh – we could execute the offense, and uh, and gosh, we had people coming off the ball. We had people uh, uh, doing what they were asked to do, you know. And you felt like, well, we just got to be patient and not put ourselves in a bad way. Uh, be patient and take what they're giving us, and you know that was what we were trying to do. Go back to that four-yard mentality, or throw the football and let's get out there and let him go get 15, 20, whatever he can get. But we uh, started executing the option very well. We had a couple times with a power play that was working for us, but the play action pass uh, was good, real good to us. Four straight drives, you, you score in the defense. Does give up one sustained drive to LR, but aside from that, uh, LR's drive summaries in the second half were all three and outs. Back to back weeks now in, a set, in the second half where you've got a combined 11 three and outs. 
uh, between the Tusculum and LR games. Why has the defense been uh, so crazy good at getting teams off the field, in the se- especially in the second half? Right. Well, I think, <clears throat> I think confidence in themselves and what they're doing. Uh, I think uh, practice habits, all right? Uh, they're, it's their preparation, it's your practice, it's your attendance uh, and practice and video. Uh, I talked to two or three of them Friday night in, in the restaurant where we were having the Friday night meal and asked them about this, asked them about that. Well, I mean, their responses were, hey, they're in on the game plan. You know, they, they've been in on the scouting meetings. They know what's going on. So to play with that kind of confidence, to play with that kind of enthusiasm and excitement, man, is that great to watch. A defense that does it too without much senior leadership. Now, granted, that one senior leader is a pretty heady one in Sahim Stupart. Absolutely. He goes over 300 tackles uh, on the season. What's he meant to this program, especially this year as really the lone uh, guy who's done it for four years on that defensive side of the football? Well, he's, he's, been, he's meant a great deal to, this, uh, to the defense uh, as a leader, as a calming factor, as an encourager. More of that, you know, a, a real leader is a guy that can inspire, can encourage. Uh, anybody can get out and scream and finger point and do this kind of thing. That's, that has nothing to do with leadership at all. Uh, leadership's about us in, in, uh, inspiring people to do better than what they are, to play a little higher on a, a different level. And he's, he's done that, done a great job. And at the same time, he's backed it up. <laughs> he's backed it up now. So, you know, he, he, we're, we're really excited about having him with us. Certainly feel like he, he's having an All-America caliber Season and what a way to go out for a senior year too. Oh, absolutely, and and uh, you know we talked to him about you know the, the worst words a man could ever say is I wished I had, and go out uh, go out every Saturday have no regrets. We talked about that, uh, you know, have a purpose for what you're doing, and you got to prepare to make that purpose come true to keep that dream alive. But man, just go out there and play wide open, have no regrets. That, that's that's a great Saturday afternoon when you walk off mm-hmm. that field. Carson Newman gets the win over the Lenore Rhyme Bears, 42-28. to Here are your second-half highlights. Five for Carson Newman. Dillingham and Salisbury, the split backs with two tight ends. One of them in motion to the right. Evans takes. QB bootleg to the left. Evans leaning for the pylon. He touches it. Yes, sir. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Derek Evans with his left hand extended. Touched the nose of the football to the pylon, the slimmest of margins, and the Eagles have tied it at 20 apiece. 7.18 to go in the third quarter. Evans with Dillingham and Salisbury in the backfield. First and goal from the one. Evans, quarterback sneak, pushes into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Derek Evans has 14 rushing touchdowns on the season, including two here today. Second most in the country among quarterbacks. And his one-yard touchdown plunge puts puts the Eagles within a PAT of tying this one up. 13.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Evans under center, takes the snap. Quarterback sneak. Evans rotates to his back and gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Derek Evans into the end zone for the fourth time today. And the Eagles have the lead, 34 to 28. Evans, a one yard quarterback sneak. Brown to his left, trips go to the wide side left. Keller back to pass, blitzed up the middle by Ross Pryor and Pryor sacks him back at the four yard line. Ross Pryor sent skyward in celebration by Brian Bimbry. Keller from his own end zone. Hands off to Brown straight ahead. Here's another negative play. Pryor again, surging into the backfield. A loss of one back to the four. Third down, 16 to go. Eagles living in the backfield. Evans, quarterback sneak. Evans pushes to the goal line and into the end zone. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Derek Evans, fifth rushing touchdown of the game. He is tied. The single game school record for rushing touchdowns in a game with that score. 41 to 28, Eagles deliver the death knell with 3.28 to play in the fourth quarter. The Demon exercised as Carson Newman downs LR 42 to 28. Eagles beat the Bears for the first time since 2012. Win in Hickory for the first time since 2009. 
Those are the second half highlights as Carson Newman collects a 42-28 win over the Lenore Ryan Bears. When we get back on the Mike Turner Show, it'll be time for our Eagle Spotlight. This week it shines on D.D. Thomas, but that's when we come back after this break. Welcome back to the Mike Turner Show. Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner following a 42-28 win for the Eagles over the Lenore Ryan Bears. Time now for our Eagle Spotlight. And this week, Daniel Whaley shines it on Deontay Thomas. Transferring to a new school and a new team can be a lot to take in, but moving from one position to another can be just as daunting. Deontay Thomas took on both tasks this season. Heading into his senior year, he moved from safety to running back as he made his way from the University of South Alabama to a rush-heavy offense here at Carson Newman. Well, at South Alabama, I know they have a, a great weight program, weight program. So the Lance Anchor, he, he trained us and trained us and trained us and made us run, run, run heavy, heavy, heavy. So coming to this uh, running offense, you know, it wasn't too much of a bad idea. But, you know, looking at everything from a, uh, from a different side of the ball, you know, it's, uh, it's tough. But just had to make that transition and, you know, everything played out well. Thomas prides himself on being a versatile athlete. While his knowledge on both sides of the ball is high, the move was quick and difficult. But the brotherhood he found in the running back group made the load a little lighter. Coming to Carson Newman, I came here about two weeks before school started. Yeah, and I, I had five days to get in uh, full pass, fully pass. I had one scrimmage, one scrimmage. So the guys in our running back room had brought me in and they, they took me in as a brother. I mean, Jared Dillaham, Steak, and just every individual that was there, I mean, they took me in and Coach Clowney brought me in as his son, you know, and everything played out right. The Dothan, Alabama native has been grateful for the help and welcoming he received from the entire unit, especially the older players. He credits fellow senior Jared Dillingham for helping him get accustomed to the position with the Eagles. Dillingham understood there was a lot for Thomas to learn in the move and wanted to help him, but he's just as grateful for what Thomas has brought to the team. It's kind of cool for him to see uh, the transition from safety to running back and the difference between that. And he helped us a lot, actually, just learning what the defense was seeing and then us transitioning from that. So I think um, just seeing uh, from a different point of view what, what the running backs are seeing, and he knows what the safeties are doing and the, the linebackers. So I think that was cool for us, too. Meshing with the ball carriers in his only year with the team was a key component in the eyes of position coach Mike Clowney. And he thinks Thomas has done well with the task. You know, it's funny when you get guys that come in in the middle of the year, especially someone like Deontay that only has one year. It's always going to be interesting, you know, because you have a short period of time to kind of figure out how they're going to fit into the room and things are going to work. But he's done a great job, you know, coming into the room, gelling with all the other guys that have been here before. Those guys did a great job as far as teaching him the offense and things to do. You know, he and I talked about, you know, you know, not having a whole lot of time, so making sure that we work to make the most of it. And I think he bought into the fact that, you know, that was something that he really wanted to be able to do, come here, you know, finish out his college career in a successful way. Him just stepping up for us it has been huge. He's went from six carries and now he's, he went for 120 some yards last game. So I think he's excited about that and we're excited and we're, we're happy that he came in at the time he did to help us out. While the brotherhood has aided Thomas in growing on the field, it's his spiritual growth that has meant the most to him. I was telling the players, uh, and coming here, telling the players the same thing. I needed to get closer to God, so that played a big role for me. And knowing that Carson Newman is, is Carson Newman and the tradition that they hold, just everything just played itself out, and my blessing just, I just stayed prayed up, and my blessing just played it right. Thomas says he wishes he could have learned the offense quicker and spent more time as a part of the Eagles program. At the end of the day, he believes he has made the most of it and thanks God for the experience. For the Mike Turner Show, I'm Danielle Whaley. All right, thank you very much, Daniel Whaley and uh, Mike Turner, Deontay Thomas, uh, senior transfer here for your Eagles. And uh, I think I heard you tell him you got to trust in the Veer at one point. Feels like he's starting yes. to really trust in the Veer at the uh, latter stages of this season. It's, um, you know, it's one position uh, on this football team at running back. And, you know, it's, uh, the, it's always been the first step is always a step of faith. It's the only offense I know that they're asking you to step hard and try to run a 100-yard dash out of your stance, and you don't know if you're going to get the ball or not. Mm -hmm. So you definitely can't be looking with your head. You can't be tilting sideways. You've got to go a 100-yard dash out of the starting blocks. That way, you've got to make a great pocket, keep your eyes and looking in front of that offensive lineman because there's your aiming point. Uh, it, mm -hmm. takes, it takes a little bit of time, and it's especially when kids are a little bit older, like D.D., a transfer, and he's mostly been in a step and read and zone type of deal. 
but it's been fun to watch him you know last week and this week just turn loose a little bit better where, he, mm -hmm. where his natural speed takes over so and get that big smile on his face that's what's been, that's what's been critical <laughs> turn your attention now to the regular season finale you welcome in the unc pembroke braves first time that you've played uh, uncp since 2012 uh, a Braves team that lost a bunch of starters from a year ago, but are coming off of a shootout loss to Mars Hill uh, in a highly entertaining and competitive game. What sticks out to you about uh, this Pembroke club? Well, anybody that can uh, score that many points and put up that much yardage sticks out to you. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, I saw the thing last night on the, on the telephone on the way home and then looked on the website this morning, looked at the stats in that one, over a thousand yards, and, mm -hmm. you know, a hundred points. Uh, you know, that's something to be very, very concerned about. Uh, obviously, they're going to be winging it from every perspective. Uh, so we've got, we've got to get ready for that one. Uh, you know, there are uh, other people have talked to me about the one part that's uh, uh, consistent for them. They're a pretty salty defense. Yeah. Uh, playing a 4-3 there, and they've got some veterans, some seniors on that, captains that are, that are uh, defensive leaders. So we've, we've got to have a great, great uh, plan and get prepared for them and know that, hey, this is uh, the last game. This is game 11. Uh, this is a game where somebody that comes in has nothing to lose. You better be prepared. Senior day uh, for your Eagles, military appreciation day for your Eagles. Uh, focus on the senior day. Not a huge senior class, but uh, a group that seems to have picked up on what this program is about this year. And, uh, taken charge to guide them to where they are. Well, we've always had different generations of players come, and every time you know this guy played here, then this guy played here, then, and to understand one day you're going to be part of that Eagle Forever program. Uh, you're setting a legacy right now for what you've done your senior year and what the group behind you is going to be doing. It's all part of a legacy and part of an Eagle Forever program, and and these guys, thank goodness, have rallied and have fought through some adversity at different times in the season, and, and, but did find out and do believe that, hey, when you do it the right way, when you're doing it to honor God and all that you're doing, you got a chance to be successful, brother. Mike, pleasure as always. Thanks for the time as per usual. Hey, Adam, thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. That's Carson Newman head football coach Mike Turner. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Mike Turner Show. Thanks for watching.